with the uh, formation damage. Let me share the presentation. Can you see the slide? Yep. Okay. So uh, yesterday we uh, had a look some uh, modeling of the um, formation damage, how we can express it e, uh, with the um, formula. The Hawkins formula, a formula for uh, evaluating the formation damage. Uh, well, uh, it is the, for the evaluating evaluating the total skin, and the skin is uh, part of the, uh, the one by one component of the skin is the formation damage, and <clears throat> we consider it the. Uh, some uh, modeling of the uh, damage uh, in plots where we have um, productivity ratio of a well uh, towards the uh, against the uh, damage different severity damage and how this damage affect uh, as the damage zone or the damage radius of the damage change. So, and uh, from this and the next slide, you will see that the most vulnerable, most effective part is the very near wellbore zone. Okay, so the very near wellbore zone is the uh, just around uh, the wellbore. And uh, that, that when the, <coughs> the the more severe the, the damage, the more quickly uh, the uh, productivity reduces, as you can see from this. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that there is a two uh, <coughs> term to express the uh, damage zone uh, uh, extension. One is the depth of the damage zone. So the depth of the damage zone is, and another one is the uh, radius of the damage zone. Okay, so when we talk about the radius of the damage zone or formation damage, we consider the zero point as a wellbore uh, center. Okay, if we say the well uh, depth of the damage zone, then we consider the distance starting from the wall bore. Okay, so it is important because when we talk about the radius of the damage zone, that means the radius, the, zone, the uh, distance starting from the center of the wall bore. Okay, so in other words, if we talk about the radius of the damage zone, then the depth of the damage zone will be uh, <coughs> the radius minus the wellbore radius. If we talk about the depth of the damage zone, then to calculate the radius of the damage zone, we have to add up the uh, wellbore radius to, to the depth. Uh, I mean, do you still, uh, don't you still wish to see the slides? Is I mean here? Yes, teacher, I'm here. I see now. It's okay. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so is that clear? Uh, difference between the depth of the damage zone and the radius of the damage zone. Uh, teacher, I didn't understand. Didn't. Okay. Uh, so the depth of the damage zone, if we consider the Let's say if this if this zero line is the center of the wall bore, okay, and this line is the wall bore, so uh, the uh, wall of the wall, okay. Let's say uh, the the casing. <clears throat> In that case, so the radius of the damage is counted from the zero point, so the, from the center of the well, and includes the radius of the well bore. Okay, so if we say that we have a radius of the damage of uh, <coughs> half meter, then that means that we have a, uh, this is the radius of the formation damage, but if we talk about the uh, depths of the world board damage, then the depths of the world board da uh, formation damage is the depths from the world board. Okay, from the wall, uh, the, the uh, wall, uh, wall board uh, wall. So from the casing, uh, roughly saying. Okay, so for the depths of the damage, well, if we if you are given uh, depths of the damage, then we to calculate uh, radius of the damage, we have to add up the wall bore radius. If we are given the radius of the formation damage, then to find the depths of the formation damage, we have to subtract the uh, wall bore radius. <coughs> Okay. And <clears throat> again, the most important uh, part of the well bore, uh, sorry, the near well bore zone is the very, very near uh, part. If you, as you can see, the more severe the, uh, the uh, depending on the severity, the most effect of the uh, damage occurs at the very uh, near well bore zone and later it is just uh, leveling uh, leveling up so it's getting more uh, less uh, steep therefore the, this area is the most important area and uh, so the same here uh, when you do the simulation stimulation and yesterday we talked about that the effect of the damage is always uh, more severe than the effect than the benefit of the stimulation on the undamaged well uh, or of, of a damaged well okay so as you can see 80 percent damage can uh, reduce the productivity by 35% at very, uh, say, say, half feet uh, distance, or it goes further to one feet, it might be even 40%. But <coughs> even 100% increase in uh, stimulation increase in the permeability or stimulated well at the one feet uh, distance we will not have extension uh, essential increase in the um, productivity as you can see it's just a maybe 10 percent or so uh, a little bit above of 10 percent even at if we increase the permeability by 
Okay. And that's because when we damage the well, we are close, especially in the near world war zone, we close, well, uh, the damage closes or plugs the uh, um, areas to flow, which is uh, anyway are uh, little, uh, very uh, uh, narrow uh, window to, 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 to flow. But when we stimulate, we just may, uh, in, even if we increase the permeability twice, it won't give good uh, big effect because of the, again, the uh, limit of the area, because it's very small area to, to increase it. Okay. And this is the formation damage skin values for the North Sea wells and the comparison with the uh, water-based mud and oil-based mud. And of course, water-based mud is affecting much more. In some cases, the skins are more than uh, 30 or 50. These are the different fields. And these are the average well skins from these fields. So. Uh, you can imagine uh, it can be even higher than uh, 50 if it, the uh, much higher than 50 or 100 uh, if the uh, average is the uh, more than 50 okay and that also shows that uh, oil based mud also can uh, affect the uh, with the positive skin up to 10 or so uh, if it is not used uh, properly. <coughs> but you have to remember that formation damage is only one of the pressure drops in the producing system. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. But the formation damage, again, as we said, the one that we can uh, remedy, one that we can uh, avoid, one that we can uh, minimize the effect uh, uh, on the wall productivity. Therefore, uh, it should be, uh, first of all, it should be identified what type of uh, damage and location of the damage so we can take uh, measures against the uh, damage. So as you can see in this, uh, diagram, the, uh, these are the uh, types of damages, the scales, organic deposits, bacteria, which can be, uh, can, which can be uh, located both uh, all uh, in all in the tubing, gravel pack perforations and formations. Uh, tubing actually, actually is not a uh, part of the uh, formation. But we uh, include it because uh, into the formation dam damage because in uh, when we estimate the skin when we estimate the formation damage it shows up as a total damage so and it mostly uh, kind of deposited on the uh, lower part of the uh, tubing. Okay, so it creates restriction on the flow, therefore it's uh, kind of also included into this uh, diagram. So, uh, and uh, then we have uh, silts and clays, uh, swelling, emulsions created with the high viscosity, uh, water blocks that are uh, the water, when, when the water uh, drops are clogging or plugging the uh, oil flow in the pore space, which, uh, well, the emulsions and clays are uh, taking part in the, the, taking place in the uh, formation and in the gravel pack perforations. And a uh, water block, wettability change or fluid filtrate damage happens in the uh, formation near World War zone and uh, depending on the uh, used um, 
drill flu drilling fluids, completion fluids, workover fluids, <coughs> and the production rates, producing uh, fluids, and uh, the uh, pressure drawdowns. Uh, shallow damage is the most common and make a biggest impact as we uh, talked uh, before. And uh, so it may, uh, as you, as we, uh, as we have seen in previous uh, slides as well, it may take, it may make a significant damage to create large drops in production up to 50%. Uh, if, uh, or even 70-75% uh, reduction in the production. And the problem uh, is that the most vulnerable zones for the damage are the highest permeability zones, because highest permeability zones will be invaded by the uh, fluids, uh, wellbore fluids, uh, uh, with the highest uh, rate, and also because of the highest uh, high uh, permeability, that that will have a uh, major impact on productivity. What does it mean? It means that uh, as it is easier to damage because it, it is easier to invade into, and uh, the original permeability is counted. Uh, and sorry, the, um, the productivity of the well or productivity ratio is based on the original permeability of the uh, reservoir. Then the uh, <clears throat> any impact on this high productivity uh, will be a high uh, impact on production rates as well. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, my question was relating to the previous slide uh, about uh, permeability. Like, the uh, more permeability is, uh, more it's prone to damage. And my question was about actually experience. Like, which optimal value uh, should be, let's say, available for permeability in order not to be vulnerable to damage or any extra effort? And is it realistic to decrease permeability artificially to optimal one? What is the permeability limit to avoid uh, invasion? That's what you said. Uh, yes, actually, which optimal value should be given for permeability in order not to be uh, vulnerable to damage? Because in the slide it is written that the more permeability is, the more prone to uh, it is uh, to damage. Yes, it is, but uh, the permeability is whatever, uh, well, perme permeability is given to us. I mean, uh, per, uh, whatever per formation permeability is, that's it. Uh, wh wh uh, there is a there, is, there will be a slide which will talk about this uh, issue that you mentioned uh, in uh, to some extent. But uh, your point to uh, decrease the permeability uh, to pro to prevent the damage is uh, actually uh, it's about the filter cake. If you remember about filter cake, do you know what's filter cake? Yes, I know. I was thinking so that the filter, uh, filter cake is the, the tool or the measure that is uh, preventing uh, high permeability zones to be invaded. But there is no other ways to decrease. Uh, well, decreasing permeability is the formation damage. Okay, so you are suggesting to make a damage to prevent a damage. Okay. So higher permeability is the better for the form for the productivity, and uh, but. Uh, the highest permeability, the high permeability also 
pr provides more chances to be damaged because uh, it, it, due to the overbalance, the, uh, the malt, uh, malt filtrate or the uh, completion fluids, completion brands will invade it easier, more, uh, at easier rates, at higher rates than uh, low permeability. That's correct. But then we have to uh, take measures to prevent this damage by using uh, clean fluids, by uh, backflowing those fluids, so the, there is no uh, the, to minimize the damage or to use a um, to apply uh, metric acidization or uh, advanced perforation methods to bypass those damaged zones. So we have access or hydraulic fracturing. So we have direct access to high permeability zones. Okay, but the uh, we will consider the questions that you mentioned in a uh, few slides later and you will see that this is kind of uh, answer to your question okay okay so uh once the well is damaged what is required to get higher rate is increase the drawdown so but that may not be effective or even uh, not possible because we may have a uh, few problems coming from the uh, higher drawdowns when the, <coughs> for example, bottom of flowing, bottom of flow pressure will drop below the uh, bubble point pressure and gas will break out from uh, out of the solution. And of course, real perme uh, relative permeability will change uh, around the well bore, which is uh, again, uh, another type of the damage and uh, that will again uh, the uh, affect the productivity or uh, the, the other effect on this uh, increased drawdown is the depleted reservoir because as we increase the drawdown that means we uh, reduce the reservoir pressure at higher rate uh, and the reservoir, as the reservoir pressure declines, well, then the artificial, uh, it will be not enough energy to produce the fluids to the uh, surface, so artificial lift may become necessary, which is again, uh, first uh, uh, cost of these artificial lift installations uh, equ and equipment, and of course delay in the uh, production to install to uh, bring back the well to the uh, back to the uh, production uh, another is the uh, as we apply high uh, drawdown uh, sand may influx sa sand particles uh, fine migration may start and water uh, gas coning may uh, be triggered because as we put higher drawdown then uh, um, the water and gas having less viscosity and more mobility, they will <coughs> move faster toward the um, well bore and we may lose the well production due to the water or gas cloning. And the, uh, finally, in some countries, they put uh, limits on drawdown to uh, save the uh, reservoir to uh, uh, avoid uh, these above uh, listed uh, frequencies on the uh, reservoir uh, and uh, it's just a kind of uh, taking care of the reservoir, taking care of the uh, environment and taking care of the uh, because many uh, contracts on the uh, expo exploration and production are time limited and what are the uh, local governments uh, doing is to save the um, fields for their own purpose so the um, uh, the uh, to increase sweep efficiency because as we increase the drawdown we will get more and more uh, finger uh, fingering in the 
reservoir, which means we will have uh, leftover oil uh, zones in the reservoir. And for that, uh, to extract those uh, uh, leftover oils, uh, there is a there will be a need to drill another well or to drill horizontal wells. So again, the uh, another capital expenses, which are mostly uh, lays on the um, uh, government uh, budget. Company uh, always requires companies always requires the capital uh, capital expenses. Uh, as a part of uh, government uh, expenses. Or well, through the uh, production sharing uh, contracts. Uh, and uh, most useful uh, method to describe this uh, formation damage is flow efficiency, which is expressed uh, by the um, Production of damaged well. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, production rate of the damaged well divided by production rate of the uh, uh, original or uh, without uh, skin, uh, without damage uh, well. So this is the theoretical number. And this is the what we have now uh, with the damaged well. And when we, uh, it is coming from the uh, Tarsis uh, equation. So when we do the uh, uh, kind of uh, this uh, division, we get the um, the only this part of this equation is different because the all other parts are the uh, all the components are the same so uh, we get this for the flow efficiency when the um, s ideal or the uh, zero skin or the skin that is the uh, only for the uh, the other part the other components of the uh, skin effect like uh, production scheme or the uh, completion scheme or uh, <coughs> a geometry scheme uh, uh, divided by the total scheme, which includes uh, above plus uh, the formation damage scheme. Or you can take only uh, this as zero and the formation damage and the, here it will be only formation damage scheme. But in real, in real conditions, it should be used as a as uh, as ideal means again includes all skin sources apart from the formation dam. So if the if your well has a uh, geometry skin, completion skin, uh, the non darcy flow effect skin, etc., turbulence skin, uh, this is the uh, this will be the this skin plus formation damage skin. Okay. Sorry, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Can we have flow efficiency more than or greater than 100%? Yes, of course. If we have, this is the, that says damage it, but if we stimulate the wells, if we stimulate well or hydraulically fracture the well, then it means that the here, we will have negative skin. Okay, well, uh, uh, the, we will have uh, negative skin. Then uh, here, and then we, uh, of course, we might get might get uh, higher uh, than 100% uh, flow efficiency. So that's uh, having uh, negative skin is the uh, more than 100% uh, formation. Uh, sorry, flow efficiency. If we stimulate a well. So the uh, well productivity is increases, or the uh, uh, permeability of nearby zone is increasing, or we increase artificially the uh, effective well bore, like in a case of frac pack or uh, hydraulic fracturing with the uh, propant uh, injection. 
then of course we will increase <coughs> productivity of the well uh, over the um, original uh, productivity. In that case, yes, we will have uh, more than 100% flow uh, efficiency. Okay. Yes, I understand very much. So, um, economic impact of deformation damage. First of all, it's again uh, the uh, as we uh, as it, as the formation damage is affecting the production. Of course, it is affecting the economic uh, impact because uh, our income, our economics, uh, is based on our production. Okay, and uh, the economic impact, the same as the production impact, is increased by the depth of the damage. Formation damage, uh, damage ratio, or <coughs> how much the uh, permeability is reduced, and uh, of course these are increasing the formation damage skin, and uh, also uh, formation damage uh, as as this increases, uh, so decreases the as we said the production rate and flow efficiency then artificial lift required earlier uh, than we planned and uh, delays project payback and it reduces uh, profitability. We will see in the next slides. So, as you can see here, we have a undamaged well, which is bold line. This is the uh, production profile. It goes some stable uh, time period and then goes to the uh, decline case, decline stage. If the well is damaged, then this decline stage starts earlier, much earlier. Okay, uh, and it may take much longer period, and the. Uh, the abandonment rate or abandonment of this well or stopping uh, producing from this well will depend on the economic limit of this well. What is the economic limit of the well of a well is that uh, the if the uh, produced rates are not covering the cost of the uh, maintaining this well, okay? And if the economic limit is high, that means we spend a lot of money to maintain this world production. That means we will have to stop this world production uh, much earlier, although it can produce, but it is not uh, profitable to keep this world producing, keep this world on production because we lose money with every barrel of the uh, of it, it is producing. If it is the low, uh, if, it, if it has a low uh, productivity, uh, sorry, low economic limit, then yes, we can produce it for longer time, but still we uh, the total production will be less than from the uh, undamaged well. Okay, that's how the uh, economics are affected. That's how the uh, damage uh, of the uh, formation damage affects the uh, the uh, economics of the uh, A well and uh, through each well it uh, affects the uh, project economics. Uh, another uh, indicator of the uh, economics uh, or uh, cost effectiveness of these uh, damages and un undamaged well is the uh, looking at the NPV. Uh, if this is the cash flow of your project, cash flow means your spendings and uh, uh, income and investments and income. Uh, as you start the project, your uh, cash flow is uh, total cash flow is negative because you spend some money in the beginning, and to uh, 
even when you start the production, it still become uh, sorry, it stay uh, stays uh, negative because you have to cover the the investment you have made uh, you had made in the beginning, and then you come to the point when this cash flow returns to the positive when all these uh, investments made in the uh, early stage and later stage are covered by total production and your project goes into the uh, positive uh, total cash flow uh, stage. And this point is called payback time, when the, the point when the uh, uh, project goes into the positive cash flow area stage. And uh, with the undamaged well, if the well is producing at higher rates, your payback time is much earlier than in damaged well uh, case. And that means you spend more money to cover these invest investments and your positive cash flow or your final uh, incomes, so <coughs> total incomes from the project is uh, delayed and getting less. So if we consider uh, the area integral of this part, which is the uh, your total income from this project, uh, is less than the uh, total area of this uh, damaged well. And this is the MPV, the, the, the sum of this integral is the MPV. MPV is net present value. It's very important. Uh, well, it's most important and mostly uh, looked or uh, um, kind of uh, followed uh, economic uh, indicator of any project. So MPV is the net present value uh, of your spending and uh, of the of your cash flow so whatever you have here is your net present value uh, uh, if it is your um, discounted uh, cash flow what does uh, did, what is discounted discounted is uh, means that you have to take into account the uh, decline rate or inflation rate for each year Okay, so uh, this is the uh, if this is the cash flow, then this cash flow for each year is uh, divided by this uh, uh, inflation rate powered by the time. For so for each year it is increased, and uh, then this uh, summated uh, total. And that will give you uh, discounted <coughs> cash flow or net present value. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that if you spend billion dollars to build your uh, platform, etc., and drill the wells and start producing, and at the end of your production, end of your project, you gain a billion dollar, that means uh, the, without discounting this money, that means you lost your money, you, you've lost your project because uh, if you uh, calculate MPV of this project, your billion dollar uh, in 10, 20 years is not a billion dollar from today's perspective, okay? Because uh, again, uh, for if you can buy a uh, I don't know, one pack of cigarette for one dollar today. In 10 years, you won't be able to buy one pack of cigarette for one dollar. It will be one or two, or one and a half or two or even maybe three dollars. So this is the discount. This is the uh, uh, taking into account the uh, net cash flow. Uh, sorry, yeah, net cash flow or discounted cash flow. OK, so. <coughs> Therefore, it will affect the net project, uh, net present value of the project in this way. You can see that your net, uh, the net value of these two uh, 
uh, roles are completely uh, different. Okay. Is this uh, everything clear with the economic uh, economics effect? Any questions about this? No questions so far. Okay, uh, I would suggest, uh, I would uh, propose you uh, look into this MPV and uh, other uh, economic or financial indicators of any project because you will need it for your uh, FTP project as well. Okay, uh, what are the sources uh, of the formation damage? Where the formation damage come from? What operations are causing this uh, formation damage? Of course, as we said, uh, formation damage starts as the drill bit enters the uh, formation or reservoir because the drilling is uh, related or associated with the uh, drilling fluids which are different uh, chemical compositions which are different uh, solids uh, compositions uh, to uh, provide wellbore stability and the pressure over balance. We always try to keep over balance to keep control of the well uh, depending on the pressure regimes of the reservoir, depending on the pressure regimes of the reservoir. If we are drilling uh, without casing, so uh, drilling is one of the uh, sources. Next is cementing, perforating, uh, completion, gravel packing. So, cementing is uh, one that uh, abstains from that because cementing uh, has even more uh, damage because we are putting deliberately the, uh, some uh, kind of obstruction around the well so that it is necessary. And beside that, we have a, uh, but hopefully we will get uh, through the, uh, with the perforations. But beside that, we have a, uh, uh, to, for the cementing, we have to uh, inject cement slurry, again, fluids with different chemical compositions, solids, into the well bore at higher uh, injection pressure. So we can make sure that the cement has a good bond between the casing and uh, well bore, and therefore cementing is another uh, very uh, high uh, effect on a, a formation damage, very high cause of the uh, formation, major cause uh, for the formation damage. Perforation and uh, completion are, again, during the perforation, we, uh, in uh, many cases, we use overbalanced perforations or uh, um, in completion, uh, when we run uh, tubing into the well bore, we use still completion fluids, which have to be uh, depending on what we uh, are, uh, what kind of uh, per completion we are doing, uh, we may have overbalance. Uh, <coughs> so again, it is a slightly uh, lighter fluids in terms of uh, solids, in terms of chemical composition, because we can use brine or diesel. But anyway, it's still uh, the other chemical composition than uh, the uh, reservoir fluid, formation fluids. And during the gravel packing, again, we have to uh, inject gravel with slurry, with injection pressures. So it's another uh, invasion into the uh, formation. During the production, what we get uh, uh, fines migrations uh, because of drawdown. We can get emulsions because of uh, water and uh, oil mix. Uh, we can get uh, 
higher drawdown, uh, which, call, which will cause the <coughs> lower uh, downward pressure, reservoir pressure around the near wall bore, and that will cause a relative permeability change. And of course, uh, water injection, uh, workovers, and stimulations. These all are uh, related to the injecting into the well bore, into the well or reservoir uh, fluids to provide uh, pressure maintenance or to provide some workovers and stimulations. These all are again uh, fluids injected into the uh, formation, which will cause uh, formation damage. Okay. Again. Uh, <coughs> What we get from drilling operations, just uh, briefly again, what we said, mud solids may block the pores, voles, and natural or uh, induced fractures. Uh, mud filtrate invasion into oil or gas zones may oil wet formation uh, and cause water or emulsion blocks. Filtrate may also cause the clays or other fines to flocculate, disperse, swell, shrink, or move, and block the uh, uh, formation or block the um, flow passes uh, through, uh, by blocking the um, uh, porosity uh, pores of uh, throats. And pore or fractures near the well bore may be sealed by traveling uh, action or trolling action of the beat, drill course and drill pipe. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, by when we drill above the pay zone, uh, we may uh, use a uh, drilling fluid to minimize the drilling cost, so drilling faster or uh, uh, if we are drilling uh, through the pay zone or the reservoir, we have to think about drilling fluid, fluids to minimize the formation damage, drilling like uh, uh, maybe oil-based mud, so maybe some compositions are uh, um, considered uh, to minimize the formation damage, etc., uh, etc. Et okay. So, uh, filter cake formation. As I uh, assume, you know what is filter cake. But just uh, to give you a quick uh, brief, the filter cake is the uh, uh, some kind of a uh, skin type uh, formation on the wall thickness. Uh, sorry, the uh, wall bore wall. created by solids of the uh, drilling fluid. And this, fil <coughs> this filter cake, uh, so the solids in the uh, drilling fluid is actually designed to create this filter cake. So uh, the uh, fluid, drilling fluid does not invade or does not flow, filtrate into the uh, reservoir, into the formation, okay, and it is circulating around this uh, in the well bore to help drilling. So it is a uh, to prevent uh, fluid loss. It is to prevent uh, damage, uh, formation damage. Uh, it is to. Uh, keep the uh, well, uh, drilling operations uh, at optimum uh, pace and uh, uh, conditions. So what is this uh, chart is about? So this chart is telling us the invasion rate, so how much barrels per foot per hour would invade into the uh, reservoir, and this is the filter cake permeability. Okay, so the higher, the, as you can see, the higher the filter cake permeability, 
of course, the higher the uh, invasion rate. And it depends on, <coughs> on the uh, formation permeability as well. As you can see, uh, the highest point is the, uh, let's say, 10 Darcy, uh, then Darcy, then uh, 100 Darcy, 10 Darcy, sorry, uh, uh, thousand Darcy, uh, one Darcy, ten Darcy, one Darcy, uh, hundred milli Darcy, ten milli Darcy, etc. So what is happening here? So as uh, at this line is the filter cake control. So above this, uh, for th this is the uh, control up to this point. If we have uh, the, the the filter cake controls the uh, inject uh, the filtration into the uh, invasion into the reservoir and here the formation permeability uh, control is working what does it mean it means that as uh, the uh, filter cake permeability increases so the invasion will increase but uh, as the uh, uh, will increase because uh, filter cake permeability is uh, uh, letting it in, uh, into the uh, formation. But formation uh, permeability is controlling when the uh, uh, initially uh, as the filter cake permeability increases. Uh, from some point, uh, whatever filter cake permeability is, then the uh, uh, formation uh, permeability will control the uh, uh, invasion because whatever is filter cake permeability, once the filter cake, per, sorry, uh, formation permeability is lower than filter cake permeability, then formation permeability is controlling the process because now whatever uh, the uh, uh, formation permeability is, the uh, uh, the lower formation, sorry, the whatever the filter cake permeability, the uh, formation permeability uh, uh, will control the uh, invasion of the flu uh, particles, invasion of uh, fluid into the wall wall. Is that clear? This is the answer to your question, Orhan, that how we can control this. So uh, the filter cake permeability is controlling if, uh, as, so, uh, as long as the uh, filter cake permeability is less than uh, uh, formation permeability. So we have to get the conditions that filter cake formation uh, permeability is less than uh, formation permeability. In that case, we can control invasion of the drilling fluid into the uh, reservoir, into the formation. If the uh, filter cake permeability gets higher than uh, uh, formation permeability, then for, for the filter cake permeability does not have any control. And as you can see here, uh, for example, for lower permeability, formation permeability, uh, uh, whatever it uh, doesn't matter how much the uh, filter cake permeability goes uh, at the from the point that uh, formation permeability gets higher than uh, filter cake permeability, then uh, it doesn't matter the uh, for filter cake permeability, but the, it is controlled by formation permeability. Okay. Uh, so is it considered a map design? Uh, I mean, this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, filter cake permeability or another stuff. Is it planned in during mass design or uh, is it just during production uh, stage? Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the production because filter cake is only uh, created and needed during the drilling. And as you will see uh, later, uh, the filter cake, even during drilling, filter cake can be destroyed because of wellbore dynamics. As we move the, to the bead, we move the uh, uh, <coughs> drill pipes or changing the pressures in the wellbore. Uh, so filter cake 
it should be uh, designed. The design of the filter cake, uh, sorry, the uh, desirable filter cake is based on uh, the, uh, it should be uh, kind of designed uh, with the taking into account reservoir permeability, taking into account uh, uh, reservoir grain size, so the particles or solids of the of the uh, drilling mud is uh, appropriate size, so <coughs> it can prevent the filtration of the drilling fluid into the well. We will talk about that later uh, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So this is end of our uh, lecture today. See you tomorrow. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Any questions? No questions. See you tomorrow. So, Bye. So. Oh.